this is Shenzhen. On top of the city's Lotus Hill is a large bronze statue of Deng Xiaoping. It's a monument to China's historic reform and opening up. On December 8, 2012, just 20 days after Xi Jinping was inaugurated as the General Secretary of the CPC Central Committee, he used his first official inspection trip to visit this landmark monument. His words were not only to hail the great achievements of the past, but also a declaration to the world that China will not stop its process of reform and opening up. Reform and opening up has been a great awakening of the Communist Party of China. It is this great awakening that gave birth to the party's great theories and practices. As socialism with Chinese characteristics advances into a new stage, China's reform has entered a critical, uncharted zone in which reformers are bound to meet more and more hidden reefs, undercurrents and whirlpools. China's国家已经进入攻坚期和深水期 Every era comes with its own problems, and each generation has its own role to play in addressing them. There is no alternative to deepening overall reform if China is to solve all sorts of difficult issues, hindering its development, diffuse risks, and meet challenges from all sides, in addition to promoting the steady and healthy development of its economy and society. With great political courage and a strong sense of responsibility, the CPC Central Committee, with Xi Jinping at its core, is uniting and leading the party and the Chinese people to stay on the right path of reform and opening up, braving all difficult tasks and hidden obstacles. It is bold in its determination to break down the barriers of old notions and the confinement of interest groups. The third plenary session of the 18th CPC Central Committee was held in November 2013. In the session, a general roadmap and a call to action for deepening overall reform were agreed on. This marked the start of an unprecedented critical battle to deepening reforms. But what should be the direction and objectives of the reforms? This was a key question that had to be resolved before the battle began. The session highlighted that the overall goal of deepening overall reform was to improve and develop socialism with Chinese characteristics and to modernize China's system and capacity for governance. Deepening overall reform is a complicated project that must be tackled systematically. At this deep water phase of reform, China is faced with an unprecedented range of problems and deep-rooted conflicts. Local patching and mending no longer work, 
key reforms in important and critical areas are needed to secure a more mature and established system of socialism with Chinese characteristics. Chinese reforms have to be more systematic, integrated and coordinated. Bold experiment and more effective top-down design are both required. Adopted at the session was a document of 21,000 Chinese characters detailing 336 specific reform deepening measures in 60 sections covering different areas. They included economy, politics, culture, society, ecology, national defense and military and party building. It was another epoch-making third plenary session of the CPC Central Committee as it ushered in a new phase of reform for China. No success in reform and opening up comes easily. In the years that follow, risks and challenges of all sorts are inevitable. And China must ensure that the CPC plays its core role in exercising overall leadership and coordinating all efforts. One month later, the CPC Central Committee set up a central leading group for deepening overall reform with Xi Jinping at its head. This top-level team took charge of arranging, coordinating and supervising overall reform design and supervising the implementation of reform plans. More than ever, the CPC became devoted to the systematic advancing of reform. Reform of the economic system is the focus of the reform agenda, with the core issue as better handling of the relationship between the government and the market. Since reform and opening up was initiated, the party has been through a process of gradually deepening its understanding of this relationship, ultimately reaching a tipping point to grasp its true nature. The 14th CPC National Congress proposed for the first time the establishment of a socialist market economy so that the market would play a fundamental role in the allocation of resources under the state's macro control. The two decades that followed has seen the CPC keep searching for a new positioning for the relationship between the government and the market through practice and theoretical research. The third plenary session of the 18th CPC Central Committee resolved to make the market play a decisive role in the allocation of resources and to let the government perform its functions better. This was a new breakthrough in the CPC's understanding of the law of building socialism with Chinese characteristics. New breakthroughs in theory have brought new developments in practice. Pingtan Island lies off the coast of Fujian province. On April 21st, 2015, the Pingtan branch of the Fujian Pilot Free Trade Zone was officially established. With the deepening of Pingtan's opening up, some entrenched issues of red tape had become a bottleneck for its development. Ni Xiaohong is an employee of Pingtan Transportation Investment Group. Her job is handling applications to be reviewed and approved by related departments of the government. Starting in June 2015, the Pingtan government streamlined its application procedure for investment and construction projects by reducing the items required for submission from 116 to 26 and merged the many application processes into four stages. By 2020, most of the project review and approval work in its pilot zone had been moved online. Paperwork for submission had been cut by more than 90% from more than 200 items to 19. Overall administrative efficiency had increased by nearly three times. 
Since the initiation of deepening overall reform, reform of the fiscal and financial systems has been enacted, as has reform to promote the market-based allocation of production factors and reform of the commercial system. The negative list system for market access has been widely implemented. Through reform of its mixed economy, China has pushed a fusion between state-owned capital, collective capital and non-public capital so as to achieve better development. Reforms have been implemented and continue to give new impetus to market growth. In the past, Bao Steel and Wuhan Iron and Steel, or WISCO, were known among China's state-owned steel enterprises for their advanced processes and high-quality products. But after a period of breakneck growth in Chinese steelmaking, drawbacks such as overcapacity and high costs were gradually exposed, and the entire industry went into a slump. In the three years between 2012 and 2015, the profits of the two enterprises fell sharply, and WISCO even suffered serious losses. Bao Steel and Wisco were merely two cases among many. The challenges they faced reflected an extremely complex economic situation, both at home and abroad. Clearly, it was time for China to deal simultaneously with its slowdown in economic growth, make difficult structural adjustments, and absorb the effects of previous economic stimulus policies. In 2013, President Xi Jinping made an important statement concluding that China had now entered a new phase of economic development, a new normal. So what should China do under this new normal? Xi Jinping noted at the Central Economic Work Conference held in December 2014 that China would continue to be responsive to the new trend and focus on improving quality and efficiency. The fifth plenary session of the 18th CPC Central Committee, convened in October 2015, resolved to follow a people-centered philosophy of development guided by principles of innovative, coordinated, green, open and shared development. One month later, President Xi Jinping proposed stepping up supply-side structural reform to reduce distortions in the supply side of the economy and upgrading the industrial sector. The country then set about cutting excess industrial capacity, destocking property inventories, reducing leverage in the corporate sector, lowering costs for businesses and remedying weak links in the economy as responses to China's new normal. At the end of 2016, China Baohu Steel Group Corporation Limited was established. Following the requirements of supply-side structural reform, it cut excess capacity by over 10 million tons and shut down unprofitable lines, withdrawing from inefficient or ineffective production. The downsizing improved its quality and efficiency. In the first half of 2017 alone, the group achieved a year-on-year -year increase of 61% in operating income and doubled its total profit. In 2020, the company eliminated outdated production systems and gained more advanced capacity through restructuring and reorganization. Its annual output reached 115 million tons, marking an historical milestone of the company joining the 100 million ton club of steel producers. It was an achievement that fully reflected the effectiveness of its supply side structural reforms. Starting in 2021, Baowu Group is now aiming to build a world-class model enterprise through high-quality restructuring and transform the company from an old state-owned enterprise into a strong and robust group. Key to achieving its objective of high-quality development has been innovation. Xi Jinping 实现高质量发展，必须实现依靠创新催生新发展动能，实现高质量发展，必须实现依靠创新驱动的内涵型增长，大力提升自主创新能力。The 19th CPC National Congress noted the need to apply a new vision of development and develop a modernized economy system as China's economy shifts from a phase of rapid growth 
to a stage of high quality development. Xi Jinping thought on socialist economy with Chinese characteristics for a new era was unveiled at the Central Economic Work Conference held in December 2017. Since then, this doctrine has effectively guided China's economic policy and steered the country through challenges. To promote the modernization of the system and capacity of state governance, the CPC Central Committee put deepening reform of party and state institutions on the agenda. To this end, the third plenary session of the 19th CPC Central Committee was held in February 2018. Unlike previous institutional reforms, which mainly involved government institutions and administrative systems, reform this time was made global to encompass the CPC, the state organs, mass organizations, public institutions, military civilian reform, covering central and local institutions at various levels. The reforms have reached a never before seen range and depth. A new emergency management department integrated 13 functions of 11 departments, including the State Administration of Work Safety, the General Office of the State Council, the Ministry of Public Security, and the Ministry of Civil Affairs to coordinate tasks in one department instead of separate departments. In November 2018, a large landslide occurred in Baigu village, Chamdo of Tibet. 30 million cubic meters of rock and soil blocked the Jinsha River flowing eastward and created a barrier lake. Water in the barrier lake was increasing by nearly 100 million cubic meters every day. The Emergency Management Department immediately convened a cross-function consultation. By unified command, coordination from top to bottom and multi-region and multi-department joint discussions, it had a channel excavated to successfully drain the barrier lake. Following the timetable and roadmap drawn up by the CPC Central Committee, institutional reforms progressed smoothly. In just a few months, the newly formed or reorganized departments successively completed the whole process of their establishment, drafting their implementation plans and transferring employees. Reform involving more than 80 departments directly under the central government resolved more than 60 long-standing issues of overlapping departmental duties and inefficient relations. It provided institutional support and guarantees in overcoming difficulties and advancing the deepening of reform in the fields of economy, politics, culture, society and ecological civilization. In October 2019, the fourth plenary session of the 19th CPC Central Committee concluded with the release of a communique that laid out the fundamental, basic and important systems that support China's unique path of socialism. It was a guiding document for China in the new era to uphold and improve socialism with Chinese characteristics and modernize its system and capacity of governance. Opening up is essentially part of the reform. Promoting reform and development through opening up is an important measure for China's continuous development. I want to 
At the starting point of the new era, free trade zones have become important test fields for China's opening up policies. On September 29, 2013, the China Shanghai Pilot Free Trade Zone was officially established. It was a new pilot program centered on institutional innovation. Multiple reform measures were implemented to shift government functions and modify financial systems, trade services, and foreign investment and taxation policies. Together, these further demonstrated the advantages of reform and opening up and free trade zones. On April 13, 2018, President Xi Jinping announced that the CPC Central Committee had decided to support Hainan in developing the whole island into a pilot free trade zone. On February 18th, the outline development plan for the Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay area was officially issued. On July 24, 2019, the ninth meeting of the Central Committee for Deepening Overall Reform gave guidelines on supporting Shenzhen in building a pilot demonstration area of socialism with Chinese characteristics. On June 1, 2020, the CPC Central Committee and the State Council jointly issued a master plan for the construction of the Hainan Free Trade Port, marking the establishment of a free trade port with Chinese characteristics. Free trade zones are meant to achieve a comprehensive, multi-level, and wide-ranging opening up based on flows of goods and factors of production and to deepen reform at an institutional level by improving the macro environment through the optimization of rules, standards and institutions and the gearing of China to international standards. Since the 18th CPC National Congress, 21 pilot free trade zones have been established all over China. The country has continued to hold major international economic and trade events such as the Canton Fair, the Service Trade Fair and the China International Import Expo. This continuation has been a driver of recovery and development in the world economy. China has shown the world its broad vision and national confidence of pursuing development with its door wide open. When um, President Xi Jinping was in Davos two years ago, he emphasized the need to keep our global systems, our global markets open. Globalization today is not one homogeneous structure. It's much more like a network um, where everybody joins because there is a win-win situation. Our world today is going through profound changes unseen in a century. Economic globalization has run up against headwinds and the COVID-19 pandemic has accelerated them. Protectionism and unilateralism are on the rise. How is China tackling the challenges while exploring new opportunities? The answer is through deepening overall reform. It is imperative to unswervingly expand opening up, establish a new system for a higher level open economy, as well as form new advantages in international cooperation and competition to provide a strong impetus for building dual circulation development, in which the domestic economy plays a leading role while the international economy remains its extension and supplement. A series of key reforms have been coordinated and conducted in various sectors such as politics, the economy, culture and education, the judicial system, environmental protection, the pension system and employment, healthcare, party building and discipline inspection. This has created an entirely new landscape on which reform and opening up can continue. Gaiga 
、骄傲自满、固步自封，也绝不能有丝毫犹豫不决、徘徊、彷徨。必须同揽伟大斗争、伟大工程、伟大事业、伟大梦想，勇立潮头，奋勇搏击。Reform and opening up shall never stop. The CPC Central Committee, with Xi Jinping at its core, is uniting and leading the people to press ahead with the progress of reform and opening up from a higher base point and marching forward courageously towards the goal of building a modern socialist country in a comprehensive way and realizing the great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation. Oh. 